He had a lot of issues this last go round. Yeah, I'm fed up with the whole thing. I well, cannot right. continue to we're, do this. Where did I take a time out here? Because I can't do this anymore. Is there any way we could do a confidential where it's not on YouTube? Uh, not really. Okay. Uh, when when people file their cases in family law, they are open and public. Okay. Unless there's a confidential child proceeding. But uh, this is a, a review hearing okay. as to how are things going. We had a lot of issues this last go round. Um, there was, she had a violent performance and a Christmas performance, which she did attend. And um, he ended up leaving right after the violin performance and the Christmas one. She didn't get a, a chance to talk to him afterwards. So it rattled her emotionally because she was looking around for him. One of his friends told her, hey, he left. You know, he already left, but she continued to try to look for him because she was excited that he was there. So there was a, a rough start at the beginning um, in which what he had said is there he didn't want to deal with all the people there. You know, um, the next serious issue, aside from the court orders not being followed regarding reaching out to the doctors, which the court order was back in October. I did confirm with the doctors again yesterday, just in case something changed. He never reached out to the pediatrician or the specialists. Um, they had a counseling session on 3-11, which was the second session he had attended with her since the whole court proceeding had started. There was a huge blowout between him and Cadence in their session where the counselor ended up kicking them out of the sessions for all future sessions. I reached out to the counselor. We actually met up yesterday. She did confirm certain topics that Cadence and her thought of to discuss. And Cadence was very, very, very upset regarding that counseling session. I do have the printout messages from the court app regarding how he was speaking to me after that, saying, F you, keep her. You're the worst thing that ever happened to her. And then he refuses to see her or talk to her because he is convinced she is brainwashed because she opened up about the domestic violence that has been occurring. Um, that's been a huge topic. It's, it's hard for her. I'd never press charges. She did have a recording of mm. him slamming my head into a window. She had a little smartwatch. She had it recorded. And that was at the beginning of the breakup in which he showed up in the middle of the night for that watch. And that is why I didn't let him inside the home because she was so worried what would happen if he found out she recorded that. So she went in her room, hid and deleted it. And so her counselor never got to see the video of that occurrence when we went to the movie theaters. So it, it's been rough. Um, we, we try to co-parent because it was court ordered for him to get either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day with Cadence. He was in the area, so I thought he was going to see her. I reached out on 1223 and I asked him what you were wanting, what day were you wanting to spend time with her, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day? That was sent out at 546 p.m. It shows he viewed it at 630 p.m. that night. He never responded. So we waited because he was in the area since he works all the way near Mount Shasta and Hornbrook. I thought he was in the area to see our child. He never responded. I found out he left the area by my relatives who are in Susanville, which we missed out on that family gathering because I thought he wanted to see Cadence and he never responded. So co-parenting has been a significant issue regarding coordinating these holidays. That's including Thanksgiving, he didn't choose to see her, so he's not exercising his rights for visitation or phone calls. Mm. I don't know what to do from here. All right. Uh, Mr. Gifford, uh, what's your input? Well, first off, I can't keep up with all the lies that were just spit out. Uh, blatant lies. And All right, well, let's stop right there. I don't want a situation where, well, 
All these are lies. I want to hear your side of things. That's all I want. I don't. I, I'm, yep, I'm going to get to that. I just had to clarify after uh, you know my accuser just spit all that out because I have integrity. Well, okay, stop again. I just told you I want to hear your side. I don't want to hear about everything else that everybody says is wrong or lies. I'll determine who's who's credible, who's not. And right now, you're not doing so well if you're not going to listen to what I say. Okay. So uh, the counseling session. Is that what you want to hear my side? I want to start where you want to start. Okay. And take it from there. The counseling session incident meeting with the counselor told me when my daughter had to leave the room because she was getting worked up because the counselor was uh, asking her questions that she didn't want to answer or know how to answer because um, as the counselor has insinuated uh, she feels like some of the things she's saying have been given to her to say. Okay. And I, and I would be absolutely up for you talking to the counselor. The counselor told me that she feels like it is doing more damage us continuing to meet because of my daughter's reformed attitude towards me. Okay. So she canceled any future joint sessions with my kid. And also told me that she would totally understand if I had to walk away from this entire situation because she sees how things are going. Okay. So after this session and some texts that were sent to me inferring, uh, well, all sorts of things I'm not going to get into, uh, I made a decision that I was no longer going to make my daughter suffer by seeing her or uh, continuing to call because 90% of the time when I would call, uh, okay, we'll say around 80, uh, she would not want to talk to me. I would get a text back from her saying that she doesn't want to talk to me. Okay. And I would tell my daughter, you can call me whenever you want as well. She would tell her that's not part of the court order. He has to call and talk to you. Um, it has been an uphill battle all the way, and I still don't understand the court's decision and, and what it's based off of in giving her sole custody and me five hours every other Saturday. And quite frankly, uh, in agreement with the counselor, the chances of... Uh, me having anything to do with my self-image in her mind uh, being interpreted a different way is folly. So I have decided to step back and quite frankly, I'm ready to throw up my hands. Um, I love my daughter dearly and I put the paperwork through here because I was tired of her having all the control over me and my kid. And now the case has been turned into Rake Straw versus Dennis when I filed the paperwork for 50% custody. And, I, I, you know, quite frankly, I'm fed up with the whole thing. In, in all honesty, I respect the office here. And I, I just, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And I'm ready to walk away from the entire situation. She wants help with my kid. I deserve to have 50% of my child's time. I've been there since she was born. I am now completely sober. And she means more to me than anything in the world. But I find myself continually being faced with the fact that she is being poisoned against me. And this is not just from what I've heard my own daughter say. This is from multiple people who have heard public conversations of me being demeaned in front of my kid from her mouth, from June's mouth. And um, it is a, a, it's an uphill battle and has been since it began. And apparently it's just doing more and more damage for my poor child who is um, having to deal with all of it. And... I really don't. I, I got nothing else to say. Well, okay, the history of this.
Actually, can I say one more thing? I know I said I didn't have anything else. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I've chosen during all these proceedings to, to try as, as best as I can to not demonize June over here, despite all the allegations and everything that was brought in front of me. Um, I'm just interested in having time with my kid, okay? Jesus Christ, who I follow, says we do not repay evil or repay evil with evil, but fight evil with good, right? When I'm wronged, I am to bless that person. I'm really trying not to go to a place that is uh, absolutely unbeneficial. And yet I, I keep feeling like maybe I have to submit all sorts of paperwork undermining um, everything she's saying because apparently I have to defend myself because it feels like it's been taken at face value. Um, yeah, now I'm done speaking. Thank you. All right, well, it looks to me like uh, Judge Punio entered the judgment and you'd reach an agreement with Judge Punio. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, we, we reached the agreement. There was, I mean, what am I supposed to say? Uh, when no, I don't want it. And uh, we, we reached an agreement two and a half hours in, which was a temporary agreement. There, there weren't any other choices for agreement laid on the table. Well, uh, you can go back to mediation and see if you can uh, get some further guidance that way. Um, yeah. So I, I just want to, well, now the case has been turned into me being the defendant. Is that correct? This is a status conference. This is a review hearing. Okay. Well, I, I want to cancel all the paperwork and uh, just get on with my life. I'm tired of her establishing her control over my life. My daughter is continually manipulated against me. Okay. It, it's, it's really tragic. And I, I don't know how to deal with it. I, I can't deal with it. She doesn't know how to deal with it. The poor thing just knows that her mother has drawn a line and she's either on team mom or she's on team dad. And if she doesn't agree with team mom, then she's against her. And this is evident wherever you go and, and almost anybody you talk to that has seen the situation play out. And I just can't continue to uh, make my daughter suffer needlessly and getting no results. Uh, it, she's not only suffering, I'm suffering. And it's, uh, it's absolutely absurd. And it, it's nobody's fault, but two parents who probably shouldn't have been parents right off the bat. Well, we are where we are right now. How old is your daughter now? She'll She's be 11, 11 in May. 11 in May. In May. And okay. I do have these, I did get three copies regarding the conversations I was specifically talking about. And I do have a release because when I spoke to the counselor, what she says is absolute opposite of what he's saying. She was recommending supervised visits due to how toxic that session one, how it's getting flipped around. She was recommending something different. So she actually told me, get a release of um, information for the courts and she will gladly talk to you guys and explain what is going on because I'm not in that hearing. So to eliminate hearsay, I have the paperwork where you can actually talk to her and she could communicate what's going on with their interactions because I'm not a part of that. I am not a part of that. Her feelings regarding him leaving after these performances or not being there on calls, not following through, of course she's hurt. She's a little girl. You know, that is... Step one, I don't want him to walk away. I even told the counselor from the beginning, I want him involved. I just want it consistent to where she's not having a meltdown. What brought up the court in perspective, what originally started it is he wanted to take her for a few days. This was after a blow up. She wanted to know where she was going. He refused to say because he thought I was controlling in which she got really upset. And I do have the recording on my phone because I was trying to capture the emotional outburst for her counselor and the psychiatrist who wants to see her to explain, like, this is the behavior that's occurring with her. What can we do to help? 
And I got into counseling August 2022 because it takes two people to get along and to not get along. So there are two sides to it. I've been pursuing mental health to learn how to regulate my emotions, to not react in a way that's going to negatively impact their relationship. And I've been continuously going through that. And Cadence has been doing counseling since 2022 as well. I think in order to eliminate hearsay, if we could get the counselor to talk to the court, and you can understand from the counselor, counselor, a licensed professional, what's going on, because right now it's just hearsay. Then we could figure out a course of action to keep him in her life so that Cadence and him can have a healthy foundation. Because despite all the fights throughout her whole life, I have kept him informed on everything regarding her. Everything. When it came down to co-parenting, we've had issues where he wasn't keeping me informed. Like baptism. She wanted my pastor to baptize her. I know it sounds minute, but it's really important to me. She asked for three months for my pastor to baptize her. I said, not without your father here. He wasn't even living with us at that time. He took her to his church and had her baptized without even informing me. Him and her both said that it wasn't going to happen. I found out about the baptism when I was in the store and they said, where are you for your child? I didn't know I was sick. I was at home sick. That's why she was going to church with him. So it's, there's a serious communication barrier. And in the app, the court app, you can see it. I'm constantly trying to work through stuff. It's not that I'm trying to spin things around. I'm trying to give it the best opportunity, but he's convinced any form of communication is manipulation. I can't change or control how he's perceiving it. All I can do is follow the court order. And I'm doing that. Even when he refused to see her, I said, don't punish her for your issues. We're going to still show up in case you change your mind. He hasn't shown up. So I don't know what to do. If he's not reaching out to the doctors, he says, She's the most important thing. Why is he leaving after the performances? Because there's too many people. Why is he not reaching out to the doctors? Why is he not willing to help when it comes down to support? I filed paperwork last August regarding child support. I haven't been pushing it, but I do have numerous messages where he's like, I'm going to leave cash in a jar. I'm going to have my dad leave cash in a jar. I'm going to do a money order. I'm going to do this. He never follows through. And Cadence, due to our communication issue, she as a little girl is trying to step up and be the parent. So she has asked him, hey, dad, can you help financially? I never put that in her head. I did have to cancel jujitsu classes because during wintertime, I didn't have the funds for it. That's not extremely important. So it was something I'm like, I don't have money come springtime. Yes, we can pursue it. So she asked dad, hey, dad, did you send the money order? In which, again, he thought I put that in her head, which she was aware of it because they argued over a video game. And that was the day he was trying to bribe with money to get the video game, which I didn't care. I said, take the video game. It's not worth the drama. But I, I don't know what to do. He doesn't want to help because he doesn't have her 50%. But he's not even doing the work in order to have more time. And he's not taking the opportunity. His visitation was extended to 6 p.m. 10 to 6 p.m. He hasn't gone to a single one. That's well, not my Well, let me, if, if I'm hearing things correctly... Um, focus on him uh, that he doesn't want visitation. Is that correct? That is correct now. Okay. Uh, well, just, just answer the questions. If I want more information, I'll ask for information. And if I'm hearing things correctly from the mother, that you want him to have visitation. I would like for him to see her. I would like for him to be involved. Just it, a, it's a yes or no. Yes, I would like him. Okay, to thank, that's, that's all I need. It's just an answer, a yes or no. Um, do you want to continue to be a parent to this daughter? I want, I want to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what, what are you willing to do to make that happen? Uh, no more of this. I mean, I'll walk away because I can't do this anymore. You just heard all that she said and, and let her tell you all of it. And 85% of it was lies. Okay. And, and I can't even defend it. And, and there's bits of truth in there that have been absolutely distorted. What is the actual reason why I can't get 50% of my daughter? I, I would love to hear it. What's the actual reason? Because I was with you for 12 years, watched our kid, was part of our life. When I was, when I was using drugs, 
and drinking. Okay. Now I'm absolutely sober and I want my kid. And she has no valid reason other than the lies that she continues to spew. I well, cannot right. continue to we're, do we're this. Gonna, we're going to take a time out here. You are talking as if your daughter is a chattel. You know what a chattel is? No. An object, just a simple object. And you're talking in a very selfish way. My kid is both of yours, child, your daughter, our daughter. And I don't think unless you see things through that lens, it's our daughter. And she has her own rights. She has rights to have meaningful visitation time with each parent. Now, a lot of parents have it backwards. Well, I want my share. I want half so that I don't have to pay so much. I want my share because I want to be involved in all the good times. I don't care about the bad times. You can take her to the to the doctors. You can do this and do that. I'll take her to the movies. I'll take her to the sports. And everything that parents want to avoid happens to their children when they don't let their children a learn what respect is. And they will learn disrespect when the parents aren't respectful of one another. And it's not respectful to just simply leave a performance uh, and not say goodbye. So can I respond to those things? Well, you can in a minute. Uh, I'm not able to solve anybody's problems today. Agree. I mean, the, the drastic action NHS does is if your child's needs are not being adequately met, cared for, that there is neglect going on. That's why the court has power to, well, maybe you're better off in another household. You know, this set of parents over here will do whatever they're going to do. They'll fight and argue and create problems for one another. Uh, but in the meanwhile, the court's concerned with your daughter having her future protected. I'm not saying that's going on here, but it can get that way when people get so bad that they just aren't taking care of business for their daughter. They're so involved in, you know, I thought that you said that she said that they thought that something, you know, and double, triple, quadruple removed hearsay when they can't talk to one another. But there's a fine line between can't and won't. When they won't talk to one another. And until there's respect between the two of you, it's going to be hard for her to respect either of you. Um, and it's a learned behavior. She's at an age right now where she's going to want to start spreading her wings and acting more like an adult, like you want her to be mature and functioning adult. Every parent wants their children to become self-sufficient, have a good career, you know, have a relationship and a family and, you know, live happily ever after. Uh, and, but some people just, you know, it just never happens because of, things that go on and keep going on until there's a realization that, gosh, it's what mom and dad do. And it's what mom and dad don't do that helps shape their child's future. So I see a note here that court advises parties that they may extend the visitation time that the parties agree and court recommends father looking into an online age appropriate parenting class. Have you done that? Nope. Okay. Do you intend to? Uh, possibly. All right. I going well, to, uh, I mean, like I said, until after speaking with, with the counselor and, um, you know, hearing this dynamic is sure paints a whole different picture. Um, it, it is, it, it's rowing upstream. My, my daughter has been literally whose daughter? Our daughter has been literally poisoned against me. So both of her events that you're uh, we're talking about, I went to her violin recital, stayed the whole time, saw her, told her I love her and bye. And she was walking off and saying hi to everybody else in a room full of packed people. I had my dad and my stepmom with me and my two other friends who wanted to come see her. Um, and... I had already said bye after the performance, told her how amazing it was, and then I left. Christmas performance. Now the Christmas performance. We are at the Loyalton Elementary School, standing the whole time in 100 degrees, okay? 
but I saw her before she went into her play, gave her a hug, told her I was there to watch her and how proud I was, said, I love you, bye, tried to stay about six minutes after and watched everybody jam packing and I had to get out of there. It was, it was burning up hot. I didn't know where she was in all the mix. And if I had not had seen her and acknowledged to her that I was there, gave her a hug, told her I love her, I would not have left. But I left because there's 500 people in a gymnasium made for 200. And I mean, I was quite frankly ready to pass out. It was so hot in there. And so I left. That it wasn't like I came and watched and just boogied out. She knew I was there. I told her I loved her, how proud I was. When she exited the stage, I got eyes at me. Uh, it wasn't wasn't as it was made out as it as she would make it seem at all. All right. Well, uh, what do you want for me to do today, both of you? I personally, I would like for there to be contact with the courts and her counselor so that we can establish a healthy foundation. I don't want him giving up. It just needs to be healthy. There's a reason we ended and it was over me standing up for our child. It was not healthy. He was trying to convince her what happened, what she saw with her own eyes did not occur. And that's why I kicked him out. I realized the psychological abuse, the abuse was not just occurring to me. I watched it happen. And at that point, he said, you're manipulating her. I said, goodbye. And I put his stuff outside. That was it. Once I saw it happening to her. So there's a pattern, which I have plenty of evidence because I'm excessively overthrown. Well, but he's all already said that he's willing to disconnect. I think he's talking out of emotion right now. And I, I shouldn't be standing well, up I, for I, him. I'm willing to listen to him talk for himself. But you're right. what I'm saying is. If you're not willing, both of you, to embark upon a problem-solving attitude and be more respectful of each other, you're going to continue to have trouble between you. And this will manifest in the character of your daughter. I'm trying. And that's something that each of you have to take care of business with. Now, if he's decided that he's done... He doesn't want to be involved and certain parents do decide that and they're not coming around. Uh, okay. You can't make fathers or mothers be fathers and mothers. You can't make people do what they refuse to do. That, that reflects on, you know, their personal decisions. So I can refer you back to mediation and you can see what you can work out in mediation. But there's nothing, nobody's made a formal request by a request for order for me to make any further orders than those that are in effect from December or October 17th. October 17th set what the rules were. Now, if you agree upon a different visit visitation schedule, that's fine. Sometimes visitation schedules are as simple as as the, may, as the parties may agree from time to time. Because there's a level of trust that you say to him, hey, uh, I'd like to go to some place, but, you know, I need some mom time by myself. Uh, can she be with you for the next few days? That's a yes or a no. But after about the third time, he says, no, well, you quit asking. That's just human nature. I'm That's not going to keep bad. asking her. I'm not going to keep asking if I keep getting the same response because that's kind of the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and getting the same response. But that's where it's on the father. To, hey, look, you know, mom needs to have some relief in a circumstance like this. And all right, I'll change my plans and make it work because I really would like to have some quality time with our daughter. And then you restore the trust in one another to be able to do these things. And you have an agreement. Hey, look, don't spin this. Why is it that 99% of the, the, the public that have children you know, really never come to court over the kids? 
They work it out. That's what parenting is about. And if you don't have an innate response, you know, sense of how to be a, a proper parent, there are thousands of courses online right now. Now, let's think about it. Until the internet dropped in our lives about 1995, there wasn't an internet. And it was handed down from grandparents to parents to parents to kids. And everything happened because they learned from the family how, you know, the family was raised over the years. That seemed to work just fine without the internet. But now that there are parenting classes for people who want to avail themselves of tips and tricks and techniques to get along better and to nurture and encourage and improve their children's lives. If ye do not seek, ye shall not find. And so when I hear from the father that, um, no, I haven't looked into an appropriate parenting class. That was back in December, January, February, March, April. It's five months ago, four months ago. What's the best time to plant a tree? About 20 years ago. What's the next best time? Right now. So if you want to take advantage of some of the resources that are out there, now's the best time to do that. Now, things have gone sideways with this particular counselor. Uh, if the trust has been lost in the counselor or the trust that the counselor has in being able to effectively counsel your daughter, uh, then maybe it's time to move on to a different counselor if counseling is really what is necessary. I don't make those decisions. Um, I will say that sometimes counselors can flourish on the conflict because the problem never gets solved. It's well, come back. It's another 150 bucks for the next session. You know, and 10 sessions later, it's $1,500 that could have been on the college fund, but the problem still, still exists. And the counselor said, well, keep coming back. We're, we're, we're just, we're almost there. We're almost there. But that's more of potentially an ethics issue with the counselor. On the other hand, some counselors are, you know, this is something that really requires accountability from the parents. I can give all the counseling and charge all that they're willing to pay until they're out of money to pay. But until there's accountability from the parents, uh, all the counseling in the world is not going to solve the problem. And so, hey, I'm out. It's just like the shark tank, you know, I'm out. I'm out because I'm not going to take these people's money when until, unless and until they invest in their own futures. Anything I do, all it's going to do is take money away from their daughter out of their lives. And it's not going to cause, it's not going to bring about any tangible benefit for their daughter. So, you can take a big time time out and say, all right, let's hit the reset button here. I mean, all, you know, for me to hear the counselor testify, oh, well, you know, this is what happened. That's what happened. This is what happened. That's what happened. What can I do? I said, well, maybe you don't want to see that counselor anymore. But don't tell me what I should have done. What, what's to do next? The counselor is going to just testify from a historical perspective. And the counselor is not going to be testifying for free, whatever the hourly rate is, plus the cost of getting here and back. Uh, who knows? Maybe the council wants a thousand dollar deposit just to, you know, be able to come over and testify. What will be proven by the council other than, well, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of tension between the, the mother and the father and it's, you know, flown over on the daughter. Uh, and I've tried everything that I have in, in my my training to, to try to make things happen, and I just can't do it. Well, thank you for telling me that. Um, what do you recommend that I do? Well, I don't know what to recommend to do. Well, thank you for being here to tell us that you don't know what you recommend to do. Um, you are the, each of you have the, the say in your own destiny. But I have, may I speak? You may. But it seems my, um, Ability in our daughter's destiny is very limited. All, all of uh, the decisions have been handed over to her. And they have been, like I said, I, I am uh, to a point where I'm done because 
I see, uh, I mean, it's extremely hard to parent somebody who is acting just like their mother towards you. And when their mother is full of, as it would seem to be, just a ton of hate and resentment, it manifests through our child. I never talk about her to my daughter. Okay. And if I do, it's just bringing her name up because something needs to get done. Not to say I haven't way in the past, but I do not do that anymore because my mother, she informed me that the person who talks about the other parent puts himself in a very bad spot. So I don't talk, but that's not the case on the other side of things. And, um, Quite frankly, I've, I've tried to squash it. I've tried to handle it in a responsible manner with this person. And um, it goes right back to the manipulation and the control. As far as trust is concerned, from the first day we started dating, she's never had trust for me. Uh, along with 95% of the people I've known her to interact with since I've been with her out of her own mouth. Okay. Uh, not to put words in her mouth, but that's my experience with what she has expressed to me. Um, I see this as being a, it, it, it's like one of those rat wheels that just continues to get off and, and I'm locked inside of it and it's continuing to turn at her beck and call, and it is creating uh, more damage than it is good for our daughter and myself, uh, and probably her as well. Um, this is why I wanted 50% custody, is to try and um, help to offset some of the stuff that's being poured into my child. And... Um, I see, I, I see since it, since this all began, um, it has gotten exponentially worse in her attitude towards me, um, not because of actions, but my daughter's recollecting stuff that she was never around to see, and it has been distorted in different points of view that just blows my mind. Uh, the only reason my daughter is recollecting any of these accounts is because she was told them. And these accounts are then distorted to where only half-truths are pre presented. And I am the bad guy when I try to defend myself when these accusations are brought against me. I, um, I really don't know how to proceed. Okay, I, I, I am at a point where I'm like ready to just be done with it because I see how it, it a parenting class, that's all well and good, but the, the parenting class isn't going to help with what my daughter's being fed on the other side of things. I understand it could help me immensely. It could help how I, how I process it, maybe, um, but it's not going to stop the amount that's getting poured in from the other side of this conflict, which is unfortunately what we're dealing with. Okay. Do you want to uh, go back and see uh, the mediator? Um, so what are the options if I get a lawyer and this goes to court? I mean, what, what does that take? Ask the lawyer. Okay. So, um, when would the mediator be set out? I'll ask Madam Clerk when mediations are being set these days. Um, usually within like a week or two. In a week or two. Yeah, and we could we could try and talk to one again. Cadence has a specialist appointment next Friday. So is there any way we could avoid that? It's in Sacramento. Uh, so it won't be available. It's out of our um, courthouse. Okay. So we just send a message and then they give us the next available date. Okay. If that doesn't work for you, then ask for a different date. Okay. So that's where I'm going to leave it because I, I don't have anybody making a request for an order today that 
I would be able to make. I just have observations and I've heard what you each said. I understand that, you know, one says zig, the other says zag. I mean, and it, until you can overcome that issue, it's going to be conflict. There are conflict resolution tools that if you want to look into them, you can. There's a free one online I could tell you about right now that helps teens through seniors settle things. It's called www.schooltools.info. It's open source, but it's used in te teaching peer remediation K to 12. And I know that it works in senior living facilities because I've seen it work there. You uh, said dot .com or org? Dot, dot .info. Dot Schooltools.info. These are the actual raw training materials put out by the Western Justice Center to help conflict resolution across all ages. It's, it's worked in, in the past for other people. Uh, I just see it. It'll work for you. Uh, you have a daughter who's set 11 years old, and that means you've got seven or eight years, and you can make them the best, most rewarding years for everybody. Or you can make them absolutely the worst, but it's up to you. Uh, and what steps you take now to keep it from devolving into just a chaotic, chaotic, bitter um, training, you know, a, an eight-year course of, that's a bachelor's degree and a PhD in how to hate one another, that you can demonstrate to your daughter. Four years full-time bachelor's degree, another four years PhD. You give your daughter a PhD in how to be exactly how you don't want her to be. So it's up to you to it's a, work it out as best you can. Uh, there'll be a point in time when your daughter's input will be more received by the court because she can get to the point says, I'm done with my parents. And, you know, I want to be with him on these dates and times. I want him to be with me on alternating birthdays. I want to, you know, I want to spend Christmas Eve with him. I want to spend New Year's Eve with mom. I want to do Thanksgiving Day with, with mom. I want to the rest of the Thanksgiving weekend with dad. And the court's going to be more likely to go with what she wants to do um, and maybe even have an attorney representing her. Uh, if the parents still can't get along. But that doesn't mean, oh boy, uh, we get to have her have an attorney. Uh, yeah, but you don't want to be paying it for an attorney, but you could end up being, you know, the ones that pay for an attorney to represent her, uh, to represent her interests because mom and dad don't seem to be looking out for her best interests. So you have the keys to the solution of your own problems and for your daughter. So we'll make the referral back to mediation and I'll, I'll just, Wish you the best, but do check out schooltools.info because it's it's not, oh, well, your parents that disagree. It's about here's how to handle conflict. Conflict resolution tools. That's why I call it school tools. It decreases bullying, increases daily attendance, more harmony on campus. I don't know. Decreases, you know, conflict between the parents, increases, you know, visitation and enjoying the visitation. And you know, a, a, a more stable environment to live in. It's toxic stress. You've heard that. If you don't know what toxic stress is, Google toxic stress. At some point in time, it becomes the equivalent of living in, you know, the inner city with bullets flying through the neighborhood every night. Don't you think that's toxic stress? Well, what if the bullets are just coming out of the mouths of the parents all the time? Every kid reacts in a different way. Some withdraw, others act out. Uh, with the special needs that your daughter has, respect those and realize that she's got challenges in her life that neither parent has. Who's she going to look to for the best, best results? Both of you. Who can she rely on? Well, she can't rely on either if, you, if you're, you're always bickering and can't get along. Uh, I mean, who's, who's, who's the loser in that? Well, she is. I mean, they got a TV show on who's the biggest loser. Well, you sure don't want your daughter to be the biggest loser. Do what you can to use the tools that are out there to make things better for, for everybody. And I think you'll all be happier for it. 
Um, and you got to quit taking stuff out of the past. Well, I remember she always, and I never, well, I'm in, and I always, and she never, you know, well, okay. <laughs> I'm married 37 years. And if I went back to the first year of the 37 years, you know, how could I imagine that I was ever going to be married 37 years? Because if I was always going back to that first year, well, she always, and I never, and I know always, and she never, it, does not work. You have to work together on these things. I've gotten to the point where I'm repeating myself, but I do it with good intentions to try to emphasize to you that you can and, and should make a special effort. Check out that website. Talk about what's there. Uh, formulate a plan. Use the mediator to help you work, work the, the fine details out. Respect your daughter more. Um, it doesn't mean that either of you have disrespected her. I'm not making any findings, not making any, any orders other than I do have to sign the order that sending you to mediation. I'm not saying that, you know, one side or the other, you know, wants this or that. It's like, it's, you've agreed as, you know, good parents would, Hey, we got to work out some differences. We need some help in the mediator that, that does this full time all the time with thousands of families is best situated to help us kind of engineer the details at our need level right now. And that's the best I can do right now. So I will sign that order and Madam Clerk will give a copy to each of you. I don't have a date. You don't have a date yet? I okay. emailed it. All right, so. Oh, actually, just, uh, oh. The next date is May 13th, 2020. And they can do 9 or 1030. What date does that land on? May 13th looks to me like a Monday. Are we able to do it 1030? Because I get her to school at 820, you know, so that'll give me time to be able to get on the internet and attend. I will let her know 1030. 1030? Does that work, sir? Yeah. May 13th at 1030. Who's the mediator, if I can ask? Um, right now, I believe it's Jane Lee. I don't think that um, Marilyn Stahl is back from me yet. Thank you. Shall we set a review following the mediation? Maybe a couple of weeks after the mediation. May 23rd, or yeah, 23rd, um, would be our next one after the 13th. Uh, will that give time for the mediator to actually issue the report? Yeah, they usually get it. All right, why don't you go back on the afternoon of May 23rd? And you can make a video appearance if that's more convenient. It's just a review. It'd be a lot more convenient than driving all the way back yeah, here. Yeah, well, if you don't have the Zoom instructions, you can obtain a copy online or maybe get one before you leave here so that you can do an appearance via video. What time was that again? <clears throat> the review is yeah. at 1.30 and mediation on 13th will be at 6.30. And I'm going to get you a, a copy of the mediation order in just a moment. Do we have to fill out that uh, paperwork that they send for the mediation again? Because we went twice and she made recommendations. And every time you go, you get like this huge 16 page kind of packet to fill out. Do we fill that out again or is it still valid for our last ones? Um, is that something that she sends you prior? Every single one. I don't have to ask um, them if they do require that. I'm okay. not sure. Since it's a different mediator, uh, different mediator might want uh, a fresh okay. version. Check with them and see what their priorities are.
So let me ask this, then we're going to call it a day. What's your daughter's favorite topic at school subject? Music. Does that count? Yeah. <laughs> She's been struggling with math. For me? Then music. Music. Yeah. And she's learning violin. How's she doing? I haven't heard her play in a while, but she was doing pretty good a month ago. I mean, for a, I've seen the progress from when they first started to how she's doing. I, I play with my guitar, mess with her over the phone uh, while I was. You play guitar? I Mediocrely, yeah, I'm getting better. Well, aren't the, uh, the strings on a guitar pretty much like a violin? Um, I think they name the chords similarly, but uh, violin uh, only has four, right? Oh, I've seen violins that have more than four. Well, There's hers, a bunch of different types she gets to pick every four. year which instrument. Well, look at something does. you have in common with your daughter there and, and how you can you know, nurture and inspire her. Uh, you have a common interest in a skill, which if she follows that skill, she'll be a virtuoso. She will be in high demand. She will love what she's doing for the rest of her life. And how important that would be to you that you had a part in training her, giving her the confidence and feedback. She's doing good. Well, she'll have plenty of confidence if she compares herself to me. Well, sometimes you have to fall on your sword and say, well, and I'm not doing so good, but boy, are you doing great. I mean, you take the hit to build her up. But I hope things will work out for y'all. See you back here May 23rd. All right. Thank you. You bet. Take care. Sure.